<laughs> now we all know and love both 300 Blackout and 556, but at what point is 300 Blackout actually superior to 556? Let's find out. Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about these two little guys you see on the table, 300 Blackout, 556, and at what point is 300 Blackout superior to 556? And I guess you can ask that question in the opposite manner, at what point is 556 superior to 300 Blackout? And a lot of you are probably thinking, easy, if it's close range, go 300 Blackout, right? And so one might think that as well because that is inherently why this whole cartridge right here exists. This specifically is 150 grain, 300 blackout by Winchester, their XP uh, deer. So it's their hunting cartridge for 300 blackout. This, as we all know and love, the 62 grain green tip M855, 62 grain projectile, moves pretty quick. Fast little guy. Out of a 24 inch barrel, you are uh, getting it right around 3000 feet per second. And the velocity is what really makes the 5.56 cartridge shine. Now the 300 Blackout in that case, when is it preferred to 5.56? And the answer to that is quite simply, well, depends on which projectile, depends on your needs, depends on your use, but ultimately within 300 yards, that's kind of where we see really 300 Blackout shine. Much beyond that, it's a fat, heavy projectile, not moving anywhere near as fast as the 5.56, so it won't be able to hold that accuracy a little bit further downrange like the 5.56 does. So with that being said, 5.56 NATO, we've talked about that before. I've got the Hornady spec sheet up here for 62 grain. Muzzle velocity, 3,060 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel, nice. Uh, next, we've got muzzle energy, 1,289 foot pounds of energy. Yeah, that's, that's quick. And it's got a lot of energy behind it at that point. Awesome. Okay, 300 blackout. Let's go with the 125 grain hollow point that Hornady has listed. Now this is being shot out of a 16 inch barrel, probably because I don't even know if a 20 inch barrel 300 blackout exists. Don't know why you'd really do that either. Because another thing that's really different between the 5.56 and the 300 blackout is its powder burn. A lot of people will say that you don't need anything longer than a nine inch barrel out of the 300 blackout quite simply because, well, you get full powder burn at about eight to nine inches, so there's nothing left anyway. Well, <laughs> typically, the longer the barrel, the more pressures that are built, and on top of that, the more rotation that can be put on the projectile itself, tending or lending to be a little bit more accurate and carry a little bit further down range. So a little bit longer barrel, works just fine uh, for the 300 Blackout. It just really shines and is at home with those shorter barrels, especially if you wanna shoot it as designed with a silencer. And that's really where we're happy about that. But like I said, 1,000, was it 1,289 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle for the 62 grain, 5.56. For that 125 hollow point, you're looking at about, well, 1,013, or 1,313 uh, at the muzzle as far as energy goes. And as far as your velocity at the muzzle, you're looking at 2,175 feet per second. So it's still got quite a bit of movement, again, right at the muzzle. And we're already seeing that it definitely has a little bit more energy than the 5.56 does. Okay, great. So at what point does that really degrade though? So at 100 yards, 1,060 foot-pounds of energy. 200 yards, 823. And then at 300 yards, 633 foot pounds. All right, great. How does that stack up to the 556? Well, at 100 yards, you got 1,014 foot pounds, 200 at 789, and then 300 at 604. So as you can already tell, that's a great difference uh, by a couple hundred foot pounds of energy at that 300 yard mark. Now, what's funny is there's actually no data beyond that, probably because they probably couldn't get an accurate hit at the 400 yards with the 300 blackout. I don't know. There's just no data beyond that, so I don't have that here from Hornady, all right? So there you have it as far as those two cartridges. But if we're gonna be talking about, again, what 300 blackout really shines in, it is the preferred suppressed cartridge. 
unless 9 by 39 walks into the room. But 762 by 35 that we have on this guy, again, 150 grain projectile. If we were to, let's say, make that a little bit heavier, let's move up into that 200, 208 grain area. Now you've got something that's subsonic. It's moving much slower. Uh, so let's say 208 grain AMAX, 16 inch barrel, 1,020 feet per second at the muzzle. It's only gonna give you about 480 foot pounds of energy. What's interesting though, is that 100 yards, it's only 450 foot pounds. And then at 200 yards, 424. What I think is very impressive about that is, even though the data for that stops at 200 yards, because it probably didn't go much further than that, is how low those numbers decrease at that type of range. Comparing that again to the, let's just go back to that 125 grain, at 1,313 to 1,036 to 810. We're talking about hundreds of foot-pounds of energy difference compared to not even 100 from muzzle to 200 yards. I mean, it's pretty interesting if you ask me. And same to 556, again at the muzzle, 1,289 foot-pounds of energy, 1,014, 789 at 200 yards. So again, quite a big difference all the way from the muzzle to 200 yards. And that's why close quarters, especially being suppressed, the 300 blackout is where it is at. If your overall objective is to be as quiet as possible, then go subsonic 300 blackout. Uh, sure, there are some heavier grain projectile 556, but naturally they're going to always be supersonic. And if you still want it to cycle as a semi-auto or even full auto capability, you're gonna have to have a lighter projectile in that sense. I mean, you can go super heavy if you want, but it's just not gonna cycle as reliably. It's, that's not its intended purpose, unlike the 300 Blackout. Anyway, another really big difference really comes down to how they shoot. So let's take to the range really quick. Let's run a couple of different guns and see how it feels. Five six is a great cartridge. A lot of fun. Shoots great. Okay, let's go ahead and throw on this guy, and you'll hear a little bit of a difference. Just a little bit, right? Out of a sixteen-inch Scar sixteen. It's fun, it really is. Shooting 5.56 with a silencer, it is pretty awesome. It really cuts back on the flash more than the sound. Uh, it su suppresses it, right, like a suppressor does. Okay, but 300 blackout, that's where it really shines. So let's go ahead, grab a 16 inch 300 blackout. Now this is the Q Cherry Bomb muzzle device. You'll see, I mean it's called a Cherry Bomb for a reason, right? So. 300 blackout, 147 grain this is. Okay. <laughs> right, so that really thumps. There's obviously a little bit more recoil. This is also a DI 300 blackout, which we'll be, can, we've got another DI 5.56, we'll, we'll shoot here in just a moment. Okay, now let's go ahead and throw on the Trash Panda silencer. I know, funny name, right? Trash panda by Q. Throw that guy on. And these are supersonic rounds. These aren't the subsonic. We had a couple of subsonics we'll throw, we'll throw through it here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and see what it sounds and feels like now with the silencer on. Ah, not enough oomph to lock the bolt back on that one. Okay. Now let's go ahead, just for fun, I've got a couple of our 200 grain subsonics. This is S and B ammo, subsonic ammo. Should be nice and quiet. Now is it actually going to have enough oomph behind it, as I like to say, to actually cycle the gun? Let's find out. My prediction is no, but we'll see. Oh. Oh, how about that it does. And do you hear how quiet that is? You. All right, I'm just gonna shoot this last one into the berm, all right? Oh, almost locked all the way back. The bolt isn't all the way back. Now it is. Okay. 
I didn't think it was gonna have enough power behind that cartridge because those gases, or I should say the propellant, is having to work extra hard to throw that heavier projectile that heavier projectile down range. So it's very cool that it actually still cycled. Now granted, uh, this is a newer gun uh, that hasn't been oiled up at all. If we were to actually oil this some and run it, it'd probably actually work just fine. And this is the uh, LWC, LWRCI 300 barrel, which is awesome. Okay, so now let's go ahead and shorten the barrel a little bit, right? So now we've got a 10.3 inch, this is the Dana Defense Mark 18, and uh, for those of you that have been around the channel, you really know this gun. Let's go ahead and try it unsuppressed here. Remember how I said I needed to clean it? <laughs> okay, that's all well and good. Good hit. Now let's go ahead, that can's gonna be spicy. Let me grab my oven mitt. And it's not exactly an oven mitt, it's a silencer shop, little, uh, Silencer mitt. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and throw this guy on here. I can feel the heat coming through the mitt a little bit. And yes, we are locked in. 55 grain, 5.56. Five, Let's see how this feels. There we go. Little gassy, just a little bit. The little bit heavier projectile of the 62 grain, we can run through it really quick. This is the one we've been talking about all this time now, and uh, we will see. Remember how I said I needed to clean it? All right, now let's run the 62 grain on it so it's a little bit heavier projectile. Is it gonna make that much of a difference? As far as gas coming back to the face, there was a little less, as far as I could tell. So the little bit heavier projectile, remember what I said about the heavier projectile of the 300 Blackout, that propellant's having to work just a little bit harder to push that heavier projectile out the muzzle. So it feels pretty good to me. Good. I got a couple rounds left, why not? Oh. Oh, guys, I think it's about time to start replacing parts on my Mark 18 here. This thing has got a lot of rounds through it, and uh, we recently did a cleaning video, and I said I, I don't clean it that much because I actually want to get it to this point. See the limit, see my limitation with it. I think I've got now about 7,000-ish, maybe 8,000 maybe 8, rounds through it now. So, yeah, it's about time to clean it. Anyway, or replace parts, actually. Now we've got the SIG Rattler here. And uh, five and a half inch barrel, 300 blackout. We've got some of this stuff loaded up here. This is gonna be thumpy. Let's go ahead and shoot a couple of shots with this guy. Let's see if I actually have a reticle that I could use. That'd be kind of nice. There we go. I just wanted to make sure I could actually hit the 100 yard, and I did, so that's cool. Only got two shots left, though, so. Solid. Okay, so now you'll notice this is exactly how this, this is considered a pistol. This is exactly how this pistol comes with uh, this flash hider. Let me grab the one we have really quick, also with the cherry bomb on it, and throw the trash panda silencer on that. Okay, and just so you guys get the full effect of the cherry bomb out of the five and a half inch Sig Rattler, let's just, just a couple of shots uh, unsuppressed here. Even with my hearing protection in, my ears are ringing. That was actually very unpleasant. So let's just go ahead and make it pleasant. All right, now let's try it. That is 100% better. Not much warmer. Actually, yeah, it's pretty hot. But anyway, great. So the answer to all the question, or the question that we asked earlier, at what point is 300 blackout superior or beat out 556? Five, five, it really comes down to, well, the projectile, the cartridge type that you're using. And on top of that, are you shooting it suppressed or not? So 
the short answer is close quarters. Close quarters, it is a thicker, heavier round, not moving as fast as the 5.56, but that energy that it delivers on target is actually greater than the energy being delivered on target by the 5.56 cartridge. Again, depending on the cartridge types and of course the, uh, the weight of your projectile, right? Great. Now, if you're gonna be shooting out to greater distances, anything greater than about three to 400 yards, stick with 5.56. You're not gonna be having the velocity that you need on target that it's gonna deliver the type of energy that you want to be able to have the desired effect on the target, whether it be hunting, defensive, whatever it might be, right? So just take that for what it's worth, and that's ultimately where it's at for me. Within three to 400 yards, 300 blackout. If you know you're gonna be having maybe different types of engagements at greater distances and shorter distances, play it safe, maybe go with 5.56. And on top of that, 5.56, is typically a lot cheaper. Uh, it's also a little bit lighter recoiling, and it's also technically a lighter round. Uh, I mean, not technically, I mean, it, yes, technically, it absolutely is a lighter round, so you could carry more of it as well without having an additional weight factor. Again, how big of a deal is that to all of you? I don't know, let me know down in the comment section. Let me know if you've uh, enjoyed today's video quite a bit or not, and, uh, let me know if you'd like to see these other types of tests, maybe comparing different types of calibers. Again, i like to hear from you guys. So again, ClassicFarms.com is where you can pretty much find everything that we've shot today, almost everything. And with that being said, you can also find free guns. Uh, so check out our website on the top of the home screen. You'll see a banner, probably me posing with a gun like, I don't know, something almost identical to this. Uh, Cause well, we give one of these away. We've given away, you know, one of these and even one of these. So we might be giving away a Barrett 50 cal as well. Might be. So yeah, I mean, we give away about a gun a week. I mean, what's more American than free guns? Oh, I guess maybe not paying taxes, but uh, anyway. All right, so with that being said, guys, again, I'll see you down in the comment section about what are your, some of your favorite calibers to shoot, at what distances, and what purposes do you have for your 300 blackout guns? Hunting, defensive, whatever it might be, let me know. And uh, I'll leave it off there, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. We'll see you next time at classicfarms.com.